Moving on to financial. Wow. Big, again, big financial issue wealth. for us who are rebuilding and who are starting over, right? right? So Jill was funny. She's like, you know what? There's so many men in their 50s who have no money, right? Because so, of, because oh of uh, you know, <laughs> it's sad. divorce and alimony and all that stuff. So the financial side, yeah, a lot of, a lot of work for us, to, for us people in our 50s to do. Mm-hmm. And you know, women have a lot of work too. It's just more of a, a on an emotional side. I yeah. would say that most of the women are more uh, bro- feel that we're broken or that we've been through trauma and loss, and we're mm-hmm. out there, you know, with codependency issues, yeah. trying to figure out how to stand on our own two feet. And and it was super scary I, for me when I let go of my business. Um, you know, it was actually one of my passions, and it, you know, my husband wasn't even involved in it in the first six years or so, and mm-hmm. I was building the whole thing, and he ended up with it, the divorce, so it was really, really hard and, and super scary for me to start over. You know, moving from employee to entrepreneur was definitely a little bit of a painful step. There was a lot of loss in, in the way that I looked at things, but, you know, I realized with my finances, I'm when I, when I went through the divorce and I had a settlement through the divorce, everything that I'd worked for my entire life, you know, all in that day, I, you know, you have this much of the pie and that's all you got. And you got to make it last till you're, you know, 80 or till you die. Right. And yep. that's, that's a really scary concept. And so in my marriage, you know, my husband was really controlling when it came to the finances and wouldn't let me have the passwords, the bank accounts, and didn't mm-hmm. want me involved in QuickBooks, of course, because he didn't want me to know where he was spending money. So, you know, there's issues sometimes with women where they don't get the practice of yeah. um, being in financially independent and learning how to manage money. And right. so the divorce kind of gave me an opportunity to um, learn all about that. I mean, I had been single a little bit before I met my my husband, but you know, it, it came down to, you know, what am I gonna do as far as my retirement plan? And how long can I keep continue to work before I won't be able to get a job in sales anymore? I mean, I am over 50 competing with yeah. 25 and 35 year olds for sales positions. So, you know, I had to hire a financial planner and that meant that I needed to trust a man. And do you have any idea how hard that was for me when the man that I had trusted with my life decided to, you know, pretty much take everything. So Mm -hmm. it was super hard for me to trust again and to rebuild um, from the bottom up. And, you know, I, it went through, it meant that I had to do the hard stuff. I had to get out there and find a career and find a, a job that I could build into a career. And you know, I, I have had about three different positions in the last five years, yeah. all that helped me get to where I am today, which I actually love my job at Insperity, being able to talk yeah. with business leaders and helping them um, make decisions on how to manage their people better and so that their businesses can run run faster and better. And uh, and so it's a great position to be in an advisory role um, in my current yeah. career where I'm working with business leaders and helping them uh, make business decisions. But you know, it was not an easy thing and to get a financial planner and, and then I invested in some properties and learned how to divest, diversify uh, my income so that I had more than one income stream. Why? Because there were times that I went without having a job. Yeah. And here I had this big life and a big house and a big huge house payment and I had to get a roommate. You know, I was like, I had to get resourceful and figure out, well, yeah. how else can I make my life work for me? And how can I share what I have financially and, and make that go to work for me so that I have m- m- income more than just one job bringing income in, right? So for those out there mm-hmm. who, let's say that's these some women who are just again coming out of a divorce and, mm-hmm. and again, for the first time, maybe they're doing the finances, their own finances. Right. What would be a few tips or the first things they should do, I guess, to kind of maybe get back uh, on their feet again? So I think, you know, the first thing is you've got to be able to um, have a way of managing your bank account. And if you have a business, you know, I had to learn QuickBooks online and Mm. I'm not, I'm not the best. I don't, I don't enjoy money. I enjoy making money and doing the action and, you know, um, building businesses and 
you know, making people happy and serving and solving problems, but yeah. actually the transaction of doing accounting is like one of my least favorite things. Yeah. Playing with numbers. I don't, I'm a people girl all the way around. I'm so a ask for girl. help. Ask, ask for help. For that help. was, yeah. Sons, daughters, and sons-in-laws, obviously they're very, mm -hmm. and they're very resourceful for so you. So I have two son-in-laws yeah. that are CPAs. And so I yeah. just said, hey, can I hire you? Can I hire you to set up my QuickBooks and help me get my business going again? And help me balance my books every, you know, twice a year. And I hired an accountant and I hired a financial planner. And so, yeah, yeah. I absolutely had to recognize what am I good at? What am I not good at? And if I'm not good at, I need to be, have an expert on my team that's yeah. on team not drill. Be, not right? be uh, afraid to ask. Right. right? And then getting really yeah. resourceful. I think it's been, you know, for me, one of the smartest things that I did, um, as mm -hmm. you know, is yeah. is getting a roommate and finding a, I have a roommate that's another 50 year old single, gorgeous gal that we have a lot of fun here together and in, in my home. And then I also have uh, three tenants. So, you know, I have some residential property and a commercial property as well. So if something happens with the market, you know, not all of my money is tied up in stocks, right? I actually have yeah. some assets that can that that are working for me on a daily ba basis to be able to increase my cash flow. So, yeah. as a woman, it, it is challenging to have a plan, mm -hmm. and it's scary. I had a lot of people approaching me about investing in things, you know, um, doing direct loans, and I just I'm I didn't want to do anything risky. So. I would advise you do not do anything risky. Mm. You know, make sure that I mean, I I wanted to come from an empowered position where I couldn't get hurt again, like I had in my like I was hurt in my marriage, and I wanted to make sure that nobody had access to my bank account um, information ever again, right? And that I was setting myself up for success. Okay, let's talk about the map. I mean, that's something okay. that, we, that people could use right. as a way to kind of uh, assess what their what your financial situation is. Yeah, so MAP stands for Massive Action Plan. And so if you're not where you are or are wanting to be with your career or with your job or where, where you are uh, financially, maybe you want to become financially independent in the next five to 10 years. And, and the reason I say that is because to, be, to live soulfully, you need to kind of free yourself from the human game. And so to be able to work towards financial independence, then we can then, have, the soul can play in the realm of free agency and actually choose what the soul wants to do to mm -hmm. uh, make money and do, to make money doing what you love. And so, you know, creating a massive action plan and really figuring out with the end in mind, where is it that I want to be? And what are the, the steps that I need to do to get there? And then tackling that one baby step at a time. Mm -hmm. Because living your life, you know, soulfully is, and having a massive action plan is going to be able to help you have a, a life full of purpose and meaning.